Welcome back to another episode of the Short Sighted Podcast. We talk about short sighted stuff today. We're talking to Ryan, and this was a genuinely or will be a genuinely interesting conversation. He started out with a minus 2.25, not that big of a deal, down to where he doesn't need glasses for the most part for that eye, but also plus six. Um, very early childhood surgery, complicated situation. He was headed down a not so great path with lots of lens dependence and a really complicated doctor setup. And instead of that, he used a combination of the amazingness of modern medical science and figuring out stuff on his own that we talk about a lot on Enmiopia to get rid of a lot of his lens dependence. So this is a I thought what was super interesting half an hour of all the things you can actually do with Enmiopia and a little bit of your own research. Here's Ryan. So where did you start out at with with the doctors? What's the what all right? The so my beginning starts way before but diopters. And actually, I'll, if you look clearly, so both of my eyes are very very different. So I've had about ten different surgeries on my left eye. Oh, um, I was born with a congenital cataract and then a growth behind the left eye. And this was at about a week old, I had the growth removed and the cataract and everything. And then over the next about, I want to say 10 years or so, it was just about like nine, 10 different surgeries to counteract different things. And this left eye, I developed glaucoma. And I mean, I'm 19 now, but when I was in middle school, I developed glaucoma, which, you know, young kids don't usually, you don't get that kind of thing developing typically early on. And so there was no other surgeries to correct that. They had to take the lens, the focusing lens out of the eye at some point, I don't remember. So I've always been very used to very thick glasses. It, most of my life I've had about plus six of correction on the left eye. Thankfully on the right eye, it's a different story entirely. So essentially this eye, if I look back at the records of just the prescriptions that I've had up until I was in about, <clears throat> like middle school, high school, there was no correction on the right eye. This was essentially my good eye, my dominant eye. had had no issues with it in terms of health-related issues. Although um, they started adding the diopters and then, you know, the negative power right when I started getting, you know, seriously into school and you start doing this all the time and all of a sudden, okay, he needs a stronger prescription. And that continued up until about, I want to say like December of 2019, I, that was the last time I got my highest prescription. I remember I was at a negative two and I had, I have a little bit of plus astigmatism or at least I used to in the right eye as well. So it was a really kind of weird prescription, but I was at a negative two and then they upped it again to 2.25 and I got them. I'm like, uh, -uh this doesn't work. It was too much correction. And I told them that I'm like, and I go down to UCLA. And so these are really high end, you know, these are the top doctors because I've had such bad eye conditions. So it's really hard to tell the top doctor, hey, I don't want this much correction. But um, it ended up being just one of those things where I couldn't take it. So I went back to the old glasses, which were minus twos. And I was like, all right, this is fine. I can deal with this. Um, but my issue was, were funny enough frames. I hated how glasses fit on my face. And it drove me nuts. So half the time I just wouldn't wear them. And just the hard part with that was the fact that this eye was not a huge amount of correction, but the left eye, I mean, I was wearing plus six plus another two diopters of astigmatism correction. So that's like nearly eight diopters of plus power just in the left eye alone, or at least it was. So it was really hard to kind of not wear glasses or do that. But eventually I just got fed up with it. And I was trying to talk to the doctors about, hey, can I get some form of lens replacement surgery in the left eye to correct the huge amount of lens that I have on there? And the issue is it's just because of all the surgeries and everything I have, they're just like, no, we can't do it. You just got to put up with the lenses. And I was like, okay, what are my other options? <laughs> and so I just started looking, at least I was like, in my mind, I was like, okay, let me see what I could do about the right eye and see if I can put up with just leaving the left eye alone. And so eventually I found an old pair that was minus 1.75 and still had the astigmatism correction in my right eye. And they're really scratched up. I had them for years. I used to wear them before I got the minus twos. And I put them on, I'm like, okay, this kind of sucks, but I can, you know, make do with it. And after a week, and this is before I discovered in myopia or anything like that, but after a week, I was like, 
I'm seeing exactly how I was seeing bef a week ago with the stronger prescription. <laughs> and so that's when I started looking into this and this whole process. And funny enough, I didn't see any Bates method or anything to start with. I actually directly found your site. It was like one search and I was like, oh, what's this? And so Google that's how I discovered that myopia. Google liked us just for that one day, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. I mean, so I, then what about, so the other eye has no lens implants. It's like all still natural. No. no. Yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> I have a very, very, I mean, in terms of, how it is visually with the left eye, it didn't develop properly with all the surgeries and everything over the years, the left eye just didn't develop to where it should be. So it's very amblyopic. It didn't, you know, I had a strabismus and lazy eye for years. And I mean, overall, I mean, if I'm not wearing lenses, it's, it's about plus six of essentially farsightedness because there's no lens in the eye. So, I mean, our eyes are naturally without any lens to focus the light, very, you know, uh, pressed by or five started. So with, um, what I'm wearing right now, I figured out without astigmatism correction in either eye, the first like real reduction I made, and I said, okay, if I drop the astigmatism in the left eye, I can get the lens thinner. Because the issue I was having was just how thick the lens were, was, and I was like, okay, let me see what I can drop. So initially I had gone down to a plus five and funny enough, it was sharper. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? And, you know, doing research, I'm like, okay, the more minus you introduce, the more it's going to make this eye just inherently farsighted until you just can't see anything. But I'm like, okay, if I'm just going to use these for distance, I can work with plus five. And I dropped the astigmatism. It didn't have any issues because my brain does not favor this eye like naturally, like it only works for peripheral vision, even with the lens. So initially I got a minus 1.5 in the right eye without astigmatism. And I put it on. I remember the first day I put it on, I'm like, oh crap. I, I have an eye chart that I have measured, you know, in my living room. I'm like, oh crap, I'm seeing 2013. What's going on here? <laughs> And it, it really, it was weird because it was less prescription, at least I thought, than my previous. But I realized I have plus astigmatism. So where it's like adding plus power in this eye or, so I'm like, okay, let me drop that and then just cut that in half. So I went to minus 0.75 without anything. And that's when I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm seeing 2030 in the right eye. I'm doing as good as I can do in the left eye. And that's when I started being able to actually work on it and, you know, kind of work with blur. And that was in March of this year. Um, so I've had the whole summer to kind of work with that. And I remember like three months into that, I was seeing 2020 with the 0.75. And I, that, I started getting really excited because this was right when summer hit, had good lighting. And so that's when I'm like, oh, let me just take everything off. And I, I work at a coffee shop as a barista besides my audio work. So I'm doing a little bit of close stuff anyways. And I was getting sick of just having to wear glasses and getting, you know, milk on my lenses and all that. And so I just eventually just stopped wearing them. And the only time I'm wearing them now at this point, I, I have another pair that's a point, point 0.5 a diopter. And it just corrects me to like 2025 at this point, like, the main thing I ironically need the glasses for at this point, this eye is permanently dilated, the left eye, because they had to remove parts of the eyes. So it's very sensitive to the sun, hmm. and bright light. So I've always needed the transition lenses. And so, you know, I don't know where they are, but I actually, funny enough, if I'm not wearing my regular glasses, I have a pair of sunglasses. You know, I was like, oh, just pop the lens out of the right eye. So if I'm ever, you know, out and about, I just tend to look like a pirate just because <laughs> I just need the darkness on one side and not the other but that, typically i love the transition that's a conversation Sorry, what was that? starter that's a good conversation starter anyway oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so pretty much just well so what happens with the with all the plus correction you are you not just not doing anything with that right i mean the intro i mean this is the great thing about how our eyes and brains work because I'm to the point now where at the beginning of this year, if I didn't have the strong correction on my left eye, my eyes just did this. And I had a lot of eye stagnus and they just would not align properly. 
there was just something about the depth and the astigmatism difference in both eyes to where if I just didn't have the glasses on, I couldn't see because the eyes are so different inherently. But, you know, the more and more I just don't wear the glasses, the more they just work together. Is I'm not seeing any clearer out of the left eye, but my right eye just takes over. And so it's one of those things to where for distance and for driving and all that, I have the plus and it, you know, it makes this eye as clear as it's going to be up to a point. And then, you know, I get a little bit of help in the right eye just so I'm, you know, doing about 20, 25 in good sunny lighting. And that seems to be kind of working right now, you know, when I need it. But I would say like 75% of the time I'm not wearing any glasses or any lenses whatsoever, which is insane for me because I spent my whole life behind, you know, a crap ton of correction and having big frames the whole time. So this has been really just quite literally eye opening for me, <laughs> you know, just not being able to wear lenses. That's super interesting, right? Because you're headed in the direction of myopia in one eye and the other eye was already a little troubled, right? Yeah. So you're, you're actually being made less able to see anything notably. And if this would have kept going on, right? Yeah. Like, your age still, you would have gone up to minus three, minus four, probably eventually. And oh, yeah. just had this super complicated lens correction that you're relying on that they can charge you a bunch of money for too. Yeah. And Not I initially, I tried contacts at one point and it, I couldn't do it. My eyes didn't like it. <laughs> so I was like, nope, this ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing, like as, um, as we're having this conversation, that makes me think is like, I don't really like to give the steps, like, here's how you do it, you know, because my my general idea is like, the more you understand how all this stuff works, the more you can do exactly what you're doing. Like you have your own life and your own situation, and whatever you got going on. If you know how the right. whole biology works and how lenses work, you can do this kind of self therapy adjustment thing. This is super cool. Yeah. This is super interesting. Yeah, yeah. And this is interesting for me right now, considering I've watched every single podcast up until this point, you know, or even rewatched them. I'll take my walks and, you know, I'm kind of, and I'll listen to them because it's like, I, I like hearing everybody's perspective and everyone, everyone's eyes are different. I mean, we have the same kind of goal in mind to, you know, get back to 2020 without the help of lenses. But I, it's interesting how different, you know, it is for everyone. And in, at least for me, it's like, I'm like, oh, Oh, now I'm the one. So this is kind of cool. <laughs> well, and, and plus, like, it, it reaffirms it for me, because it's kind of weird being the dude on the other side of the screen. I always say this, like, I throw all this stuff up there. Yeah, bad sense of humor and everything else. But it takes a certain amount of, you have a reason to do this, you want to mess with it, you're going to immerse yeah. yourself in all the stuff and figure it out. So I'm kind of proud in a weird way. Right, like that, I get to be a part of yeah. your little, you know, your adventure in figuring out your eyesight, and and I mean, for the for the people that listen to this kind of stuff, I think it's it has a really profound impact long term on your life, right? Because now yeah. you're not this, there isn't this handicap sort of thing going on. Nerd goggles, as you've put it before. <laughs> that's mean i only do it because you don't need them you know so i feel like i'm not really bullying i'm just encouraging you to go i don't yeah don't need this yeah that is super yeah cool. so with the right eye right yes. right eye left so the left eye do you think there's any more like do you see any changes is there any positive direction there at all or do you think that's the maximum that you're gonna get out of? you know it's one of those things because it almost works as a helper to my right eye. I mean, I'm, I'll put it this way. I had this confirmed by an ophthalmologist that my eyes were changing about, I would say a little less than two months ago. I was wearing the minus 0.75s in my right eye and the plus five in the left eye. And I measured identical to the previous prescription, which was in the left eye, it was a plus six with an add 175 of astigmatism correction and a bifocal on top of that. <laughs> and so it was a very big jump downwards for the left eye. And I think that was the hardest part initially was just the difference of that. And I mean, with all the way that this eye developed, the best I can ever do is about 2100, 2125. And it's not that anything's blurry per se. It's just the best way I could put it is a straight line looks like this <laughs> and everything is kind of wobbly and it moves around and it's just the eye didn't develop properly. Yeah. But I'm to a point now to where my brain has figured out 
both without correction and with correction, and it's very seamless. Like, you know, I don't feel any difference of putting the large lens on and off. Like, it helps, and it, you know, takes the blur and makes it sharp. But because there's no astigmatism, no bifocal, no change in focal plane, it, it just makes sense to my brain, and it just it's just second nature, I guess. That is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah. Because the other thing is, in a weird way, I kind of feel like a fraud. Um, Mm -hmm. because what do I know, right? Like, I'm not a doctor. It's just, it's been this ongoing just thing, but hearing how, what I'm saying works because I keep seeing it, but then hearing you saying it is totally different, right? Because you actually have to apply a a thing that's not even the standard and your visual cortex still figures it out. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think my biggest hiccup right now in, you know, everyone would probably agree with me is the screen time in the phones. And, you know, that's just the common thing. But, you know, it's so hard to put them down and to get away from it, at least for me personally. It's just that's the one thing I think keeping me from, you know, making any progress because I've been I've been kind of stagnant. There's some days if I'm in good lighting, if I just spend the whole day not looking at any close, you know, all of a sudden I'm doing 20, 20 with half a diopter and I'm like, oh, this is great. But then the next day, you know, I'm still a little blurry with 0.75 just because a little bit of screen time. And yeah. So it's like, gosh. I do weird stuff. Like I experiment with this because there's no getting around the phone addiction. I think that's just, yeah, it's going to go more in that direction. So I do yeah. not like right now, I'm on a weird trip where I don't bring my phone, but mm. I've got a, no, not too crappy, but a, an iPad that has got a SIM card thing in it. Yeah. So it's way less convenient. Like I'm skipping that, that you unconsciously take it out of your pocket you know, keep yep. checking it. It's in a bag. And then also the the point of immersion is further away because it's a bigger screen. Right. Yeah. K- kind of helps. Like, I'm still not sure, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the irony for me, I think what would help me more is I can't do anything close with my correction. If I was to just have no correction in the right eye and just the left eye, I, I literally can't do anything close. It's all a blur. It's, all, it's, it's almost like I was plus one or two diopters farsighted in that eye, it's the same effect. And it, it'll give me a headache if I'm anywhere near with the plus in my left eye. Mm-hmm. Ironically, it doesn't do that with nothing on it because I think it's just such a blur to where the brain's just like, okay, we're not going to use this. But um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because if I'm at a certain distance, I when I'm doing audio engineering, I, I work as a mixing engineer part-time and I, the great thing, I have it set up in front of huge windows. And, you know, I'm not in a place where I have to have a super sound treated room. I just use really, you know, good headphones and that kind of thing. But, you know, I'm looking at distant objects constantly. I'm literally looking at a landscape, if you will. And the screens, you know, uh, you know, the screens are well away from me. It's like just at that edge where it's a little blurry. And I think that has ironically helped me a little bit in, you know, because I, I noticed if I spend an hour or two, even if, you know, I'm in front of a screen, but I'm in front of a landscape, if you will, and I have a little bit of blur at the screen and t- I'm looking at text and having to really focus on little things. And so even though it's not like always distance or outside, I feel like that kind of does help in a way just because it's the same kind of process of, okay, a little blurry, clear it up kind of thing. Yeah, it does. And I do, I, I've got the side wonderment about this because I've got a friend good friend of mine who had had a cataract surgery like you as a baby, but I think they did it too late. So the brain had already Mm. discounted. It moves correctly. So both eyes are moving with each other. It looks fine, but she doesn't see anything out of that eye. And I keep wondering, Mm. like, and I'm not interfering and it's not like, I don't know anything about it, but I keep wondering if you added some lens correction, figured out how to get that, like, is there can that I see any better? Like, could you get it back into play? So it's right. Yeah. I think it, I think it's so hard just with there being no lens that it just, it's all about timing. I was about one day from losing this eye, even hours. If, if I didn't have emergency surgery, I wouldn't have had this eye. So it was one of those things that I consider myself incredibly blessed just to have the vision I have in it, (laughs) even considering how bad it is compared to, you know, normal, you know, stereo vision. But I also would say, though, this is what my brain's known my whole life. This is what is considered normal from my perspective. So if someone, like, if for example, if you were to go into my, I guess, head and see what I saw, 
it would very much mess with your brain and nothing would make sense and you wouldn't be able to see it all. But it's the, I, this is not even almost about the change in eyes. I think almost as much as it's the brain connecting to the eyes and just getting used to it. Our brains adapt. And this has been said a lot of times, you know, even on this podcast, it's like part of it's the eyes, part of it's the brain adapting to the stimulus that we're giving it. So it's super amazing. It's super amazing. And that's, uh, and I, I don't want to like qualify what, what story is more interesting than another, but having this much more extreme situation and you going yeah. towards just not relying on correction much at all versus them really putting you in stuff. Cause they're amazing. Cause what you said, like the, that emergency yeah. surgery and the fact that you have both eyes, that is like modern medical science, freaking awesome. But yes. then at the same time, the same kinds of people would screw it up kind of with the lenses, mm. right? Like it's happening. Yeah, I mean, it, it, com it comes down to money. <laughs> it's just with everything, it always comes down, you know, the profit margin. And the, the fact that I think, and this was the interesting part. I know I had mentioned I had the optometrist confirm that I had different vision. I didn't tell them what, you know, they'll check my glasses and, you know, they'll, they'll see, oh, he's wearing his prescription. But they they don't know that I was doing this. So I kind of purposely didn't tell them that I was messing with my correction. And, you know, they didn't change anything. But I remember like in a dark room, I was doing 2025 in the right eye and 2100 in the left eye. And that's what I knew. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. This does work because I was wearing a completely different prescription in both eyes with no astigmatism correction either. And I was still seeing the same as I was at the last checkup about it, you know, a year ago. So for yeah. me, that was when I was like, okay, this works. <laughs> I don't care what the doctor tells me this works. Yeah. And that's the funny thing too. It's like, you have to sort of know what the system will do for you and what they won't do for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I'm yeah. not, I'm not a substitute for what these guys can do for sure. Yeah. But there's that, you can't tell them everything because if you do, you run into that. Nah, now you're messing with a thing that you don't understand. They will yeah. think, and they don't want the liability or responsibility. So at some point, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly what you're doing. Like you rely on them for the stuff that they're good at, but you know yes. where that boundary is really like, ah, now you're just going to mess me up. So it is. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think, and, it's so weird because I guess you could say I started out with low myopia and I definitely did in terms of the spherical correction. This is the one thing I've yet to understand is how big of a difference just 0.75 of plus astigmatism correction made because it was the difference of, you know, having less prescription and seeing way too sharp and overcorrected. And I noticed a lot of people don't have the plus astigmatism or that, you know, other power of astigmatism, it tends to be minus. And so I was going to ask, like, have you found, you know, what have you kind of heard or found with the kind of a plus astigmatism it's interfering a, it, with the minus prescription? It's the same. So it's, it's actually the same. The numbers, you, there's conversion calculators online. If you turn it yeah. into minus, it changes the, the spherical correction also. It's usually ophthalmologists right. that give you plus, the plus annotation versus the minus one. Um, okay. whenever I start out, I always recommend people just switch to minus, which is what optometrists do. And it's much right. simpler because now you've got a spherical, I don't going to say it's correct, but it's consistent with minus right. cylinder. It's just easier to do. It's an ophthalmologist yeah. thing. They just do plus for whatever reason. Yeah. Cause, cause I mean, in, in my head, I think what it was is just, you know, it's adding plus power to the minus, which was what take technically, like it was probably, I was probably closer to like a 1.25 without any astigmatism correction when I was at the minus two, I'm thinking, because it was about, you know, 0.75 difference with, without kind of thing when I was just, you know, you know, going to Zenny and buying a bunch of different classes just to test it out. <laughs> so that is super cool. That's super cool. I kind of want to, I want to do, and I, I keep saying this and then I have no good calendar follow-ups, but I'd love to do a follow-up in like six months or a year and see where you're at because you just started oh, yeah. earlier this year. So it'd be interesting like how yeah. far you can get with this. Um, and the other thing I would say is like, take your time, right? Like, cause the brain and the whole thing takes longer to adjust than we really think. Right. So yeah. I say three to four months for spherical reductions and it could be six months for cylinder. Like the more time, the better, because everything mm -hmm. seems to always go great. And then you yeah. hit a wall. So that the main thing is like, if you just give it, you know, like where you're at now and just don't mess with it for six months. 
You know? Right. Yeah. Cause it, and I think the one thing I find is I'm at that point now where I kind of go back and forth between 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.7 to five, depending on what I need. Like if it's dark and I'm driving, I need the a little bit higher, you know, if it's sunny, I'd be fine without anything, but I need it just for the transition lens kind of thing. So, you know, I kind of put up, okay, I'm getting a little bit of blur. I can clear it up. And it's one of those things where like, I can, it's, it's such a low difference now. And I think the biggest thing for me, and this is another thing I noticed, you know, as the prescription increases, you're getting more lens distortion. You're getting more of a distortion of literally what you're looking at. And I was finding that really frustrating. I think what pushed me into initially even making reductions and looking into this was how frustrating, frustrated I was getting with glasses as a whole. I remember they had changed. I had always had polycarbonate because they put, you know, they put kids in polycarbonate for safety reasons. And I remember that la that time I got the 225, it was, there's was so much chromatic aberration. It was just so horrible. I was like, I can't see through this. This is just not working. And I remember, you know, I remember fighting because with the people making the glasses i had to go through two or three different runs because you know they charged me a thousand dollars for these glasses <laughs> and yet they couldn't even get something that didn't i mean the lens was it wasn't even a proper properly made lens there's like right in the middle of my vision there's a blur spot like where there was like an imperfection in the lens and so it pushed me to look online and just you know look at other ways to handle this and eventually i was like okay i could just buy a cheap pair of glasses online with the same thing I got them. I'm like, oh, here we go. No yeah, issue. It was like CR39. And it was, you know, I was like, oh, I can see great. This is wonderful. Yeah. Abbey value is way better in CR39 mm. anyway. Oh, yeah. It, it, for a side note, because I think we said this before we started, is you're a photographer. So you also have a more probably right. acute awareness of how lenses mess with your eyes. Like the, most people don't realize. I keep saying it because people will go, this is going to take me five years if you start at a minus five or more. Mm -hmm man, that's too much time. But I'm like, every doctor, you see everything a lot better because you don't have all this or less of the distortion, the compromise right. in the image. And unless you're into this kind of stuff, like photography is perfect because you understand lenses, mm -hmm. you understand light, you look at stuff different. So you mm -hmm. can appreciate the quality. That's cool. So yeah, I mean, because once I got to like, the 0.75, you're at the point where there's next to nothing. And I mean, I have a pair of half diopters. There's no distortion. It's just a nice flat plane. There's not that huge jump of focal distance. And I think that's also helping because it's like, it's just enough to get everything like clear and sharp. It's a little blurry, but it's still clear and sharp, but it's the same focal plane essentially to my brain. That's been a huge motivator for me alone. I'm like, at this point, I'm like, you know, even if I was just to stay here, the benefit in having the less distortion to look through and it not being such a huge jump of with and without the glasses, that's been beneficial to me more than I could ever say. Yeah. And I think that's the cool thing about it. That's super cool. It makes me happy. You yeah. know, it's a weird thing to go from having a blog that's just me ranting about stuff to this. <laughs> it's totally amazing. It, it's, I super appreciate it. I super appreciate you taking yeah. the time. We had to reschedule and everything and you're still around. Oh, yeah. Like, so cool. Like, I hope that it helps people that are maybe even in less complicated situations to take it on as a yeah. little bit of a project. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of what I had going into this. Cause I was like, I always found it interesting. Cause I, I have the tendency, I don't have OCD, but I, you know, I do have the kind of ADHD mindset to where when I get into something, I get very hyper-focused into it. And when this became the thing I was very into, it became, all right, I'm really doing this. I'm really into this. And so I got very involved with watching the podcast and kind of just hearing, even if it was repetitive, kind of like, reassuring and kind of just keeping on with it and so i found it really interesting when randomly you emailed me i was like oh <laughs> this is interesting because <laughs> i hadn't really made any initiative or anything with that and i was like oh okay <laughs> yeah i barely keep it together like there i get so many emails every day and every once in a while yeah. i'm like yeah i should just oh, do another podcast thing these are awesome whenever i do one i'm like why am i not doing these yeah. more often but yeah yeah makes me happy all of this is awesome. I appreciate you taking the time. I think this whole, oh, yeah. this is a good amount of time. People complain okay. I make them too long. So any other thoughts, questions, comments, tell people to go do it. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things I, I went into, it, I was trying to think of like, okay, what else can I do? I mean, it's interesting. I'm going into winter and I'm kind of at that, like, 
you know, the, the one dioperator wall, if you will. And, you know, I've heard all the advice with it. And so I kind of know what to do, but it'll be, yeah, like you said, it'll be interesting when it's like almost like spring next year, summer next year, just to kind of see where I'm at kind of year from now, I have a feeling I'll probably still net, probably be at a similar prescription, but seeing very good with it. And, you know, kind of, cause I'm doing 20, 40 naturally at this point without mm -hmm. anything. So it's like, it's at that edge where it's like, okay, I can function without anything, but yeah, yeah I mean, I can't think of any other questions. I don't, I'm not, not that, no, no. I, I would just say, take it easy till spring, right? Like let the yeah. whole thing work its way out completely, you know? And then okay. if you remember, bug me or otherwise, I'll see if I can figure out this calendar stuff just to follow up and okay. see how you're doing. Yeah, for Thanks. sure. I'll most definitely thank you for reaching out. I'm de definitely didn't expect for you to reach out. So that was really cool. Yeah, awesome. I appreciate it, Ryan. Thanks so much. Yes. All right. Thank you, Jake. All right. And that was it. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I thought this was fascinating and super interesting and really showing how much you can do with all of this if you put it to some good use and you have the patience and do some experimenting and learn what you do. And that's it. Uh, look forward to the next episode, which will be hopefully semi soon. See you in the next one. Meow, 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 meow.